Hello, VietConf. I'm so excited to be here with you today. My name is Nathan Weinert. I am the creator of Tamagui, which is a funny name, but a very cool library, I think. It is a cross-platform, so React Native and Web, UI Kit, style system, and most interestingly, an optimizing compiler that does all sorts of analysis on your code and turns it into very performant platform-optimized output. So basically on the web, you get all sorts of cool stuff. Um, and on native, you get hoisted and flattened and extracted styles and, uh, and a render tree that is actually much faster. So I encourage you guys to check it out. It's not really what I'm talking about today. And I'm also very much aware that Vite is born out of the Vue ecosystem. Um, so I just happen to be working on native apps and React Native is a really great way to share code between platforms. Um, but in working with it, I have ran into a lot of things. And I first actually started, my first experience with Vite was basically working on the optimizing compiler plugin for Vite. And it was the last one that I implemented. And honestly, it was by far, just not even close, the best uh, integration experience that I've ever had with the bundler. I mean, the API surface is just light years ahead of anything else. And also it's just so fast feeling um, that I definitely just, I knew that I wanted to keep working with Vite. We converted a decent amount of our sort of one-off apps over to Vite. But uh, in the end, you know, that was basically what I did and I hadn't really worked with it much since then. And one big problem, I think, if you're not familiar with kind of the React Native and, and sharing code between platforms, it's, it's a problem that Tamagui is trying to solve by making the styling much, much easier and much more powerful while not sacrificing performance. And I think the theme of the talk that I'm giving it here is basically just how do we simplify our stack and make it much faster to work with because we have much less conceptual burden and we also have much less just technical complexity behind the scenes. And I mean, let's not beat around the bush, I basically have been trying to get Vite to serve React Native because the way it works today is you have a different bundler called Metro and then you actually end up with just some crazy stack. I mean, you have like a monorepo usually where you have Next.js or whatever you want and then you share code between the two with a separate packages. And now you have so many new problems. You have to figure out multiple locations to put all your files. You have to have some sort of glue library that puts everything together, which I use the awesome library called Solido. Um, but in the end of the day, it's just, it's a lot and it could be a lot better. And so I'm gonna play a video for the rest of my talk um, and just kind of have that going on while I continue to monologue to you guys. Um, and uh, it's just gonna show Vite serving React Native and kind of have a fun little demo of the hot reloading and, and what it can do. And so uh, I'll talk about sort of how I ended up here, which is basically, it's just been a nights and weekends project um, and I've, you know, my, my, my stretch goal was honestly just to get it working. And, and, uh, but I, I did get it working uh, about a month ago. And, and then I just went ahead and, and started to see what I could do next. And my next goal was obviously hot reloading because that's the big one. And that took quite a lot of work because the initial bundle has to be built in common JS, which is what React Native supports. But then you have to do hot reloading in common JS. So that requires some, some massaging. And of course, I wanted to have SWC and have it be fast. Um, so again, lots of work there. Um, the other thing is that the React Native ecosystem is just insane. I mean, uh, React Native itself is shipped with Flow as just Flow in a JavaScript file. There's a lot of packages that just ship TypeScript uncompiled, but they wouldn't really tell you that. Um, there are other packages that have common JS exports in a, in a form that just is very confusing, like circular and like in, it doesn't get parsed properly. So it's quite a lot of work. Um, and then, and then some packages even import the internals, you know, of React Native. And so that was a whole another thing, um, especially to get hot reloading working with all of that. So it was a lot of work, uh, but it is all running very officially. So it's using rollup for the initial build. It serves that bundle and then it uses Vite for the hot reloading from then on out, uh, all running in Vite as you normally would. Um, so I'm working on open sourcing that. I'm going to have a link at the end that will just, you know, forward to whatever that repo ends up being. I'm extracting it out now from, you know, all the spaghetti code that I had just getting everything working. Um, but I am very happy with where it's ended up. I'm actually able to load quite complex things. I'm able to load Tamagui. I'm able to do all sorts of fun stuff at this point. Um, and, and my other stretch goal then, once I got Hot Reloading working, was to see if I could get Expo Router working. And that's cool because Expo Router gives you file system routes that are shared between native and web, where you can do like a stack view 
on native, but have it be a, di a different sort of paradigm on the web, but still have this shared single file system routes. And so again, simplifying the stack, I was that was one of my main goals was like, if I can get that working with Vite, I'm super happy. And I did just get that the other day, fully loading using import.meta.glob. So you can glob your file system routes from any folder and just passing it in and it's actually fully rendering and working. Um, oh, the other thing, of course, that I'm showing probably but not telling is that I got it working for web too in the same process without having to run two different Vite instances. That was also very cool. So super exciting. You, for the first time ever, you can now just run a single bundler, single config, uh, it's Vite, so it's the best one in the world. And you just have web and native running at the exact same time. I mean, it's just, you know, uh, it's amazing. So Expo router support hopefully coming soon. Maybe by the time this talk comes out, we'll see. And and then the, the, final, the final point that I just want to throw out there while I have you guys um, is that I just, I, I worry a little bit because the React ecosystem is being sold pretty hard right now on server components. And someone who's like, I've worked on a lot of native apps and I, I really like this app-like model where you just have such a simple, single way of thinking about your whole tree, you know? Like when you write a Swift UI app or something, you don't think about the server, you don't think about that. And, and traditional SSR React apps are really nice in that sense in that you basically don't really think much about these having these different worlds. Like, you know, I'm trying to get away from that complexity. I'm trying to have a simple, single stack. And uh, and server components are getting all this hype, but it it... It's a really dangerous path, I think, if you're thinking about doing an app at any point in time, or even if you want app-like features, I think you get a much, much better experience by just staying as a SSR, but or just like a fully, you know, client-style app. Um, and so I, I really want to just put out there that I think that there is, the, the problem that we've had is that there's no great libraries that keep a really great web experience, but then also give you that native-like feel of optimistic mutations, local first data that stays cached and works offline, um, you know, that you can just edit and mutate even when you're offline. Um, and that's instant and it gives you that instant feel, transitions between screens, instant updates that, that I don't think you get when you have something like server components. And also that you just have, a, again, a single way of working with things that I think would be awesome. And so um, I have this library that I love to, to death and it's just the most underappreciated library of all time and it's called GQT. So I just wanted to plug it, gqty.dev. It's such a cool, cool, cool way to fetch data. And it it happens to use GraphQL, but you would never know it. And I think there's a, maybe a really interesting path forward to do a file system routes for GraphQL that makes it as dead simple as possible. There's one other library called Gratz, um, not to just be throwing out all these things to you guys that are somewhat unrelated. But if you were to marry all that together, I think you could have uh, DX that is unmatched, UX that is unmatched, and just the simplest, uh, nicest way to to run a, a cross-platform app, sharing all the code that you could possibly imagine and moving at lightning speed. And so I'm so excited by what this Vite uh, bundler has unlocked for me, and I, I'm super excited to see what the community does with it. Um, and so I just wanted to thank the creators of Vite and, and the community and the maintainers and whoever put together this conference. Uh, so thank you guys so much. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy and have a good one. Cheers.